Good evening, everyone. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us again for session two. Um, just going to do a quick sound check with everybody. Um, if you could just let me know that you can hear me first and foremost, and you can see the presentation slide. So if you can just quickly let me know. All right, brilliant. Thanks, Ellis. Thanks, Louise. Cheers, Claude. Thanks, Michael. Good to see everyone. All right, brilliant. Well, we'll um, yeah, thanks for that. We'll uh, we'll kickstart in less than one minute. We'll just um, yeah, we'll just wait another minute for the late arrivals which are coming through, and then yeah, we'll get the um, show on the road. I'll be back shortly. Okay, all right. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Daniel, and I'm the co host for your uh, special webinar tonight with Daryl and Karen. So, um, yeah, good to, um, good to see everybody here today. Um, just to let everyone know, as you can see, this webinar is um, being provided by Go Markets. So, if you don't know who we are, feel free to um, head over to our website, but I'll also just kind of run through a few slides to. Um, Kind of give you an idea. Now, like I said, it's a session, we had session one last week, so really looking forward to session two tonight. Uh, yeah, obviously with Darren, Daryl and Karen. And um, anybody who missed session one um, after the series is finished, which is after tonight, um, then everybody will receive a recording link who registered for session one and session two. So if we don't get through all the questions tonight, um, obviously we'll try our best but if you did miss anything we will provide the recording so hopefully you'll be able to to go to go through that and get the answers all right okay so first and foremost let me just run through the disclaimer with everybody all right so the information provided by go Marcus analysts or external spokespersons is based on their independent analysis or personal experience the views or trading styles expressed only represent their personal views. They do not represent the views or positions of Go Markets. This course contains only general information and does not consider your personal goals, financial situation, or needs. You should consider whether this information is suitable to your needs. Before making any decision on financial products, you should obtain and consider the product disclosure statement and financial services guide on your website. All right, so the, what I noticed from the session last week, guys, is um, although we had our usual clientele, uh, we did have a lot of new faces turn up. So not everybody knows who we are. So just going to do a brief introduction just to say everybody's on the same page. So Go Markets, uh, based in Melbourne, Australia, since 2006, online CSD provider. So, you know, we do our best obviously reg regulated by ASIC, um, and we provide a trading platform people, for people to trade CFDs. Um, so yeah, over the years, you know, clients come first. You know, we pride ourselves on integrity and compliance, and being a technology company, we obviously try and provide a very, uh, a good trading experience. So that's fast execution, stable trading platform, and obviously cheap, low spreads and uh, brokerage costs. So that's who we are. For those of you who have traded shares, um, being a CFD provider, um, if you are looking or interested in trading, say, currencies, uh, we do provide Forex trading, share CFDs, so you can buy or short 
uh, shares. If you're looking to maybe buy or sell Afterpay or Appen, uh, you can speculate in both directions uh, using margin. And of course, we have the indices like the ASX, DAX, uh, and metals, commodities like gold, silver. So yeah, we have 350 products available. So if you're interested in checking those out, uh, those are available to trade. Um, now, our main trading platform is MT4 and MT5. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it is the world's most popular trading platform among retail clients. So um, that's our main driver. Um, and yeah, check it out if you haven't already. Um, what I'll do now, oh yeah, and um, we've won a couple of awards over the last couple of years. So in 2019 and 2020, um, investment trends rated go markets number one for customer service and education materials so we do have a great team um, if, you, if anyone's new needs help with the platform or has any questions you know we'll answer your call within 30 seconds and we get back to your emails usually within two hours so in terms of customer service you'll always have someone to speak to everyone has a dedicated account manager as a direct point of contact like I said, we're a, a general advice broker only, so we're here to support traders only. Last one, uh, Go Markets is the official trading partner for Chelsea. So for those who do follow the soccer or the football, um, yeah, Chelsea won the Champions League recently, which is good. So um, it's good to be aligned with a very successful brand like Chelsea. So we are the online trading partner for them um, and it looks like that's going to be extended for another two years so that's enough about go markets for now um, what I'll do is um, I will now pass over to Karen and let's get this show on the road can you hear me Karen yes I can hear you can you hear me Okay, so everyone should be able to see my screen. Is that right? Not at this stage. Really? Oh, okay. Now I can. Oh, you can? Okay. And you can hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So Daniel, should I start? Daryl says yes. <laughs> All right, I'll start. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for making time to join us. Uh, let me just. Okay, now I've done something. Okay. Sorry about that, I'm just fiddling with my screen. Okay. Okay, all right, I'll start again. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for making the time to join us. Uh, I see a few familiar names in the room. So if you were here last week, for last week's webinar, welcome back. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to show you the main framework I use to trade FX. I hope everyone has had dinner. If you haven't, this slide might actually make you more hungry. But then again, if you don't really like Japanese food, that's another story, but I'll chat to you later and I'll try to convert you. <laughs> so there are 30 types of, Jap of restaurants in Japan. Each type focuses on a particular type of Japanese cuisine. So you might get a restaurant that might only cook ramen or it might only make sushi. And some food stalls might only make these fish, which are filled with a nice sweet red bean. So whatever the specialty is, the chef is a, an expert on this type of cooking. Like the chefs in Japan, I actually want to be really good at one particular, in this case, style of trading, repeating the same method again and again. 
In this presentation, I will show you the essential elements of my framework for trading FX and the type of setups that I look for. So using the framework, I will show you how it works on a couple of my intraday trades. So we'll go through that. I like to close my FX trades before I sleep. So I use daily four hour and one hour charts. The methods I'm going to show can easily be used on any time frame, including three minute charts and as well five minute charts. We need to have boundaries when trading FX. Without a framework, trading can become like a guessing game of when to enter. And if we're wrong, without boundaries, our losses can, losses can get larger and out of control. We see in a framework though, if we have a framework, we can answer these type of questions. Where do we enter? Where will we get out? How many pips should we risk? Before opening any FX trade, I always like to write in my little notebook. Uh, I need three essential elements and these are the things that I need to open before I open a trade in order to manage it. So I need an entry trigger, a profit target, and a stop loss. This is what my three-step framework looks like. In my search for a potential FX trade, I look for charts showing my preferred entry conditions. And I usually do this using one indicator, and that's the Guppy Multiple Moving Average, the GMMA. Before opening a position, I identify a likely profit target of where price might go to. So from a daily chart, if I'm trading long, I'll take the open of the day and I'll add 75% of the five day average daily range. If I'm, or in the case when I'm trading short, I'll take the open of the day on a daily chart and minus 75% of the five day average daily range. Research by ANSYS showed that these profit targets have an 85% probability of being achieved over a 24 to 48 hour period. Although a good number of pips is possible, I value my sleep. So I always adjust the profit target to a more manageable 20 to 30 pips. I can stay awake long enough just to catch these. The final step in my framework is using the trader's ATR as my stop loss. I need to know when to get out if I'm wrong. And I, I really want my losses to be small. To demonstrate briefly, this is what my, this is what the three step FX framework looks like on a chart. In this example, the chart showed an uptrend. A trader's ATR line is placed on the chart here under price to be used as a stop loss and a line is drawn across the chart to represent the profit target as calculated by the 75% ADR calculation. Let's look at a couple of setups where where the GMMA shows us a good entry area. These are the two types of GMMA setups I like to trade. On the chart at the left, the red lines of the long-term GMMA have widely mm -hmm. separated moving averages, indicating strong support, support for the uptrend. Just before the marked entry, just here, the blue lines of the short-term GMMA were previously compressed and were starting to expand out slightly. This is my entry trigger. Compression followed by an expansion of the short-term GMMA provides a good entry trigger for a trade as it suggests more price movement in that direction. The potential profit target is a 75% ADR calculation, where in this case going long, we take the open of the day, and add 75% of the five day average daily range. The stop loss is the line of the trader's ATR. Another type of setup I like to trade is shown on the chart at the right. And the marked entry here shows 
that the red lines of the long-term GMMA are well separated and the blue lines of the short-term GMMA are also well separated. So that's around here. These two groups show that the uptrend is strong. The potential profit target is a 75% ADR calculation, where in this case, going long again, we take the open of the day and we add 75% of the five-day average daily range. The stop loss is at the line of the trader's ATR. These setups can be found on any time frame, whether it's a one-hour chart, a 30-minute chart, or even a three-minute chart. So whichever chart, whichever chart you like to trade from, and you all know what your favorites are. Now that we have the three-step framework, we'll look at a couple of my past intraday trades to see how the framework works in the FX market. The first one is a trade on Pound New Zealand. To get a better idea of the general overall trend, I like to go to a higher time frame, like a daily chart or a four hour chart to, to analyze the GMMA. Starting with a four hour chart on this Pound New Zealand chart, we see the blue lines of the short term GMMA have passed up through the red lines of the long term GMMA, indicating a trend, a change in trend from down to up. It's a high probability that price will continue to move upwards so looking for a long opportunity, I actually turn to a one hour chart. On the one hour chart, we see the blue lines of the short term GMMA sitting above the red lines of the long term GMMA. This is in the order of an uptrend. The widely separated lines of the long term GMMA show really good support for the uptrend. Now in this particular trade, we could add more to the framework. So I've, had a, I've got a trend line which we can use and it's drawn through the bottom of price. At the right edge of the chart, we see on the most recent candle, how price has just rejected the trend line. So it's just rejected here and it's come back up. So given the analysis on the four hour chart where we saw a general uptrend, and now seeing this uptrend here, I've got, we have an expectation that price will continue to go upwards on this chart. So a position was opened as marked, just here. So using the framework, we have an entry trigger, which is from the signal of the GMMA, a calculation of the profit target, which is here, but it's not shown on the chart because the price level is a bit further up and a stop loss price from the trader's ATR line. Here in detail is how the calculations are made for the entry, profit target and stop loss prices. The entry is the price that we can get at the time that we see the GMMA signal. By using the 75% ADR calculation for the profit target, we calculate 1.9415, which is 89 pips from the entry price. There is an 85% probability of price reaching 1.9415 over a 24 to 48 hour period. So to get those 89 pips, there is what, however, one condition. You have to get the direction of the trade right. Get it wrong and you could be in 89 pips in loss, which is, not, not something that we like to see. As a personal preference, I like to monitor my trades and not stay up overnight. So I often reduce my profit target to around 20 to 30 pips. The final step, the third step, calculates the stop loss by taking the price on the trader's ATR line just directly beneath the entry candle. So how did this trade go? Over the next hour after the entry price began to move up, the blue lines of the short term GMMA began to separate out more and move upwards. 
price approached a resistance level on the chart at 1.9350 and reached my adjusted profit target of 20 to 30 pips. A support line and an adjusted profit goal were two more criteria that I had added to my three-step framework just to help me manage my trade. I closed the trade at 1.9350 for a profit of 24 pips. After the trade was closed, as marked by the yellow star, price continued to travel up until it reached the 75% ADR calculation line. Remember, there is an 85% probability of price reaching this level over 24 to 48 hours. Living in the Australian time zone means it's hard to stay up at night to capture these really big gains. I know I keep saying this, but I do like a good night's sleep. So I don't stay up for any trade, and I always close my trades before going to bed. This means I'm not always awake when the price does reach the 75%. ADR calculation level. So, you know, as I said before, I usually adjust my profit target to around 20 to 30 pips. And if the trade is moving really well, I could get a little bit more. Price then turns around after it reaches a high up here, it turns around and it comes back down. And any trader hold, still holding onto this trade would have been stopped out on the trigger of the trader's ATR line at 1.8287 for profit, still a profit of 39 pips. Let's look at an intraday on the EuroCAD. For this trade on the EuroCAD, I started with the higher time frame of the daily chart. EuroCAD had been in a definite downtrend with the red lines of the long term GMMA sitting above the blue lines of the short-term GMMA. This is in the order of a downtrend. The widely separated lines of both groups show really strong support for the trend direction. On the right side of this chart, price has pulled back up into the long-term GMMA and is now passing back down. There's a high probability that the downtrend will continue. Opening up a lower time frame, the EuroCAD one hour chart, we see the long term GMMA group above the short term GMMA group. This is sitting in the order of a downtrend. The long term GMMA has widely separated lines indicating strong support for the downtrend in place. Price pulls back to the upper edges of the short term GMMA, which looks like a really good place to enter. A position was opened as marked by the blue arrow. So we have the entry trigger from the signals of the GMMA, a calculation of the profit target of 1.4838, which is not shown on this chart because it sits just a bit lower, and a stop loss price from the trader's ATR line. Remember, this chart could just as easily be a three minute chart or a five minute chart the framework and the GMMA setups are essentially the same. Price traveled sideways for a few hours and then started to make a move down. Sometimes we have to be patient and wait. Price reaches my profit target goal and I close the EuroCAD trade for 30 pips. This is a pretty straightforward trade, not like some trades where you uh, have the prices going up and down and going against you, but this was a fairly um, a stable kind of trade for me. The original profit target of 1.4838 has not been reached at this stage. Over the next 24 to 48 hours, there is an 85% probability of price reaching that profit target level. I might not be awake for when this happens, I may be asleep. So in summary, the three-step FX framework enables us to set the parameters of every FX pair we trade. It contributes to good trade management by defining a possible profit target and limiting risk. It's also good, has a potential use with other technical indicators, um, adding to the foundation 
for improved trading. If you're interested in learning more, Daryl Guppy and I have a book that was just released actually yesterday. It's available on Amazon Australia and many other websites worldwide. Uh, and it'll also be available very soon at your nearest bookstore. Also, you are very welcome to read the articles on my website at karenwong.net. I wish you all the best and thank you for your attention. Now someone needs to flip screen sharing to me and we can continue. Okay, just confirm that you can see my screen, please. And that you can hear me. Can someone confirm that they can see my screen, please? And can someone confirm they can hear me? Thank you. Well, we'll make it, no one's confirmed, but we'll make a start anyway, just on the assumption that you can see the screen and that you can hear me. I guess someone will complain if they can't. Thank you very much for logging into this second session of this evening's presentation. It's an interesting time. The stock exchange, the XJO, has made new highs. And a lot of people, are a little worried about a market that makes new highs. So what I want to focus on tonight is trading in equity markets, in markets that are making new highs. And there is a particular method, the Davis trading method, that is all about trend continuation that is based and built around trading new highs. That's the very foundation of what's going on. Davis developed what we might call the traditional or classical method. But for modern markets, it needs some modification. So I will look at Hello. those modifications. Just a quick one. I just want to confirm that everybody can hear you loud and clear and everyone can see your slides. So I just wanted to let you know. Okay, I'll let you do that and then you can get tell me when I can start again. No, 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 carry on. No, no, I just wanted to let you know that everyone can see you and oh, can hear you. Right. So feel Excellent. free to carry on. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Thank to you very that. much. <laughs> okay, sorry. So there is a traditional or classic Darwin trading method. We'll look at how that's built because that's the foundation for the modern Darvis method that is appropriate for the current market conditions. The problem is most of us get terrified of heights. This is a glass floored walkway in Zhangjiajie, which is in Hunan province in China. It's a 1,200 metre drop to the bottom. And you can look at the way people walk along this walkway. Some people, not too many, just walk boldly ahead and they're prepared to look down and have a bit of a glance around as they're walking. Others grip the side rail as hard as they possibly can and look straight ahead and occasionally glance down to the side. They're not that confident. And there are the third group, of course, who just turn to the wall and hang onto the wall and don't bother looking over their shoulders at all. They've got no choice. They have to keep on going forward. Fear of heights is a major obstacle, particularly when you're walking on this glass walkway, but also when it comes to trading the market. The market continues to make new highs, but is it safe to buy? That's the key question that the Davis trading method seeks to answer. Because what we want to do 
is we want to avoid what we might call a strategy for the foolish. Now look at this strong trend here. The question is, would you buy here for a continuation of the trend tomorrow and the day after and the day after? Or has this trend developed so far and so fast that you're better off standing to one side and looking for something that's just beginning to break out rather than something that's creating new upside highs? We have to avoid the situation where we buy here and suddenly the next day or a couple of days later, the whole thing collapses. We want to avoid being the last fool that buys in this environment. So just buying new price highs just because they're new price highs, it's a strategy for fools. Buying new price highs is a good strategy if and only if it's part of a continued bullish strength. So the Davis method helps us to identify when it's safe to buy at point A and point B and point C, point C, and it helps us to understand why we should not be buying at this final point here just prior to the collapse. We get caught up in our ideas of cheap and expensive. Look at this chart here. Started trading, it's traded at $20 for a long time. It broke through resistance at $26.50. It's now trading at $40. It's a clear and well-defined trend. And we can apply things like Guppy Multiple Moving Average to help define and understand the trend. We can apply straight edge trend lines and a variety of other tools. But when it comes down to it, we look at it and say, it was trading at $20, it's now trading at $40. The odds on this going up have to be much, much lower. Maybe we shouldn't buy it. We talk ourselves out of the trade. And then, yes, it goes above $40, then it moves sideways, and then it continues to rise, peaking out at $80. Now it's definitely too expensive. Would we be going to buy tomorrow? Now, the point that I'm trying to establish here is our ideas of what is cheap and what is expensive are not a good guide to trend behaviour. They do not give us a good solution as to whether we should enter a trend for a new continuation. If we're in the situation where this $40 high here was also a 12-month new high, then many of us will look at it and say, no, I don't want to be involved. It's simply too high. It's, it's a glass walkway on the bridge environment. But by comparing this high price, $40, to a previous low of $20, we are confusing this idea of cheap and expensive. And we're using it as a guide to the way the trend might or might not continue. This is where Davis comes in. Davis created a series of volatility boxes. He applied them and the techniques to stocks that were making new highs. This was a methodology that was developed in the 1950s and the 1960s. So it's stretching back a fair amount in time. They're a classic set of Davis boxes. I was fortunate enough to be stuck in an aeroplane on a 16 hour flight from Kuala Lumpur to Los Angeles. I was doing a, a speech, a presentation at the Orlando uh, Money Show. And I had this book by Nicholas Davis called How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. And I had the opportunity to read it in detail. And it was particularly attractive for two reasons. One, because at the time the market was making new highs and I was stuck with this idea of cheap and expensive. But more importantly, Davis was a showboat performer. He sailed on cruises. So the method that he developed allowed him to monitor his trades and set an accurate stop loss that followed that trend upwards. So every couple of days or a week, depending on how things developed, he would simply send his broker an instruction saying, the stop loss is here. If it closes at that level, get out. And that happened to suit me particularly well because at that stage, 
I was traveling more frequently and I was finding it more difficult to manage my open positions in the way that I had in the past. So this is a good way to plunder the market. So how's it set up? Now I'm going to show you how to set this up. It's easy enough done. There is some software that includes Davis boxes, but most software does not. And if you're using MT4 and MT5, this is something you're going to have to do by hand, but it's pretty easy, so there's no great problems. So what we need to do for a start is we start with the new high for the selected period. That means doing a scan in the market and finding all of those stocks that are making a new high for the 12 month period. Locate that stock, locate that high. Then what we're looking for is a series of three lower highs. Now this doesn't mean three lower highs in the sense that each high must be lower than the other. What it means is that the three lows that follow the high must be beneath that high. So here we've got a high, a lower high, but here a higher high but it's still lower than the peak high. So it's three lower highs. Three highs that are lower than the peak high. Once that's created, we can draw a line to the right hand side. This forms the top of the developing Davis box. But we also need to form the bottom of the Davis box. And what we're looking for here is a low that is followed by three higher lows. Again, they do not have to be three consecutively higher lows. They can include a higher low, a higher low, and then a lower low, as long as it is higher than the lowest low where we started the calculation from. Once this develops, we can draw the bottom of the Davis box. Traditionally, Darvis said that if there was a move below the bottom of the Darvis box, then the trade was closed. That's something we'll look at as we move on. So what's the trading strategy? The trading strategy from Darvis's point of view was that you bought a breakout to new highs above the top of the Darvis box. Let's just go back for a moment. I'm a bit of a pirate in the market. I like to see what other people are doing, let them do all the hard work and take advantage of it. So of course, the first modification that I looked at was rather than wait for price to come all the way back up here and close above the top of the box, I would buy as close to the bottom of the box as possible once it was formed. But that's the classic Davis box. Problem is, times have changed. The market is much, much larger, more volatile, and much more sophisticated than it was in Davis's time. The total volume of trades in one day now exceeds the total volume of all US trading for the year at the time that Davis was working. So we have to make some adjustments to take into account much more formidable components in the market. We can't use the old pirates plundering methods exactly to be able to take on a modern market environment. So what are the changes that we're looking at? They appear to be rather small, but they are significant in terms of allowing us to survive in modern market conditions. Here's the modern McDavis box. It starts off again with a high for the selected period, or let's say 12 months at this point. Still have the same patterns here. We need to have three lower highs and we need to have three higher lows to set the top and the bottom of the box. However, in modern market conditions where there is a substantial 
increase in volatility. We get too many false exit signals if we act on an intraday move below the bottom of the box. The stop loss is triggered only if there is a close below the bottom of the box. It's a small but really significant change in terms of the application of Davis trading. And in the modern market, it increases the reliability of the approach dramatically. So the difference, one of the major differences between the modern Davis box and the classic or traditional Davis box is the exit signal. It is on a close below the box and exit on the next day rather than an intraday move below the bottom of the box. The second change that took place in modern markets as distinct from markets in 1960 also reflects the increase in volatility. Davis identified a very unusual situation where the initiating candle, in other words, the candle that was the highest high for 12 months, set the top of the box, but also set the bottom of the box. Here we can see we have three lower highs swinging off here, but we also have three higher lows. So this first individual candle sets both the bottom and the top of the Davis box. Very unusual in Davis's time. He noted this purely as an exception. But in our markets, because of that volatility, because of the force that we have in terms of volumes of trading, this becomes a more common feature. So as soon as I identify a high for the 12 month period, I'm looking for the potential for this to develop. The next change in features also reflects changes in market behavior. But first, we need to look at the way the trend develops. Davis was fairly confident that in his time, there were relatively slow moving trends. So you would have a breakout from a Davis box, a new Davis box would form fairly rapidly, followed by a new one and a new one. So you could continue to move your stop loss up behind the rising trend. This doesn't happen in modern markets. In modern markets, we tend to move much, much more rapidly. So the problem here is defined by the blue boxes. Here's the first valid Davis box. And we've bought in here and our stop loss, it's set at the bottom of that blue box. Now our next stop loss is set at the bottom of the next valid Davis box. That doesn't occur until up here, almost at the end of the trend. Now it just doesn't make any sense for all of this rise here to have our stop loss sitting down here. It just simply doesn't work. So what we looked at was developing a ghost box or a shadow box. And essentially what we did is that once prices closed above the value of this box, we took the same size, the ghost, and projected it upwards. And that became our new stop loss. A breakout above here, we did exactly the same thing. Again, shifted the stop loss. Is this valid or is it just a simple trick? No, it's valid. It's valid because the Davis box is built around a volatility box. Taking that high and three lower highs, taking the bottom and three higher lows creates a volatility box. In some ways, it's similar to a five day ADR. It's similar to using a countback line. It catches a measure of volatility and says, if it closes above that level, the trend is likely to continue. If it closes below that level, the trend is likely to have ended. So the solution in a modern volatile market where there are extended trends, which cannot be defined with a valid Davis box, then we use a ghost box. And the bottom of the ghost box is used to set the stop loss 
to follow that rising trend. And if it's triggered, we're out of the trade. So the first change in conditions, the exit is on a close below the box. The second change of conditions is that if there is no box developing, you use a series of ghost or shadow boxes to be able to move the stop loss. But perhaps the most significant change comes from the way that we understand some key relationships in the market. Now remember, Darbus was writing in the 1960s. He was basing his understanding of the market on what had been written about in the first technical analysis and charting books in the 1930s, Dodds and Graham. And what they suggested, what they believed was that volume led price. Using this diagram here, this would be volume and this would be price. Price followed volume. In the markets of the 1930s and the 50s and the 1960s, this was largely true. It's no longer true. But we still have lots and lots of people who believe that it is. They just refuse to accept the reality of the way the market has changed. What happens now is that price leads volume. Price drags volume behind it. Now, why is this important for Darvis? It's important for Darvis because Darvis said that the Darvis box was verified by changes in volume relationships. And that became a key part of the way that he applied the trading method. In today's market, we do not need to do that. We just simply ignore any volume. Volume is irrelevant for both drawing and using and applying the Darvis blocks method. So why the change has taken place? Now, if I was in front of you, I'd ask you to answer a single question by putting your hand up. Who does a search based on volume? Not price and volume, volume. Who does a search for trading opportunities based on changes in trading volume? Nobody. Nobody searches based on volume. But I'll ask you another question. And I'll have to imagine the answers. How many of you do a search based on price, looking for stocks that have increased by 5% or 10% or 20% each day and use that as a starting point for analysis? Now, on average, I would expect that about 50% of you do that. So what's that tell us? It tells us that we are looking first for price increases. And when we see it, and there are lots of other people doing exactly the same thing. When we see it, then the volume will follow it. It's a major change in our market relationships. It reflects the increase in computerized power to be able to quickly scan the market for particular characteristics. Sure, we all, lots of us still do price and volume searches, but really the important part of that is volume. Sorry, the important part of that is price. Volume follows. There's only one exception. And of course, that's inside trading, or let's call it informed trading. And in that situation, volume does lead price activity. And you can see many examples of that, particularly in the Australian market, because the Australian market has a reputation overseas for being a market that is rife with inside trading. And you can see it. There's massive increases in volume and very small increase in price. Then you discover there's an announcement on the next day and then price increases. That's the primary volume price relationship. But in terms of Davis, what's important is looking for the price movement first. We're not worried about volume confirmation. Davis, and this is the final change between modern Davis and classic Davis. In the classic Davis approach, he only looked for breakouts through new highs on a 12 month basis. That was his stock pool. That was the group of stocks that he would look at, see if the Davis box applied 
and trade. What we find in current and modern markets is that there's a pretty good reliability in buying new six month, seven month, eight month, nine month, 10 month, 12, 11 month and 12 month highs. Any high made beyond a six month period is a candidate for DARVA style trading. You don't need to wait to get a breakout to the new 12 month high. However, once you come back looking at five month breakouts, four month or three month, it's not so reliable. It's not a good technique to apply. And I'm sure that some of you were sitting there going, yes, I could possibly do that. Yeah, that's, oh, that would be good for breakout trading. No, it's not. There's not enough previous price activity and volatility coming through that price behavior to be able to adequately set a Davis stock box, a, a Davis box on a reliable basis. So they're the primary changes that take place. And we can summarize them in this way. First, volume is not significant. This is the modern application of Davis boxes. We can use six to 12 month highs. So any stock that makes a six month high or a 12 month high or in between those periods is a suitable candidate to see if their price activity is consistent and compatible with Davis boxes. And the last modification is that the exit signal, the stop loss exit signal, is an exit on the close below the lower edge of the box. Not the intraday moves, a close below the lower edge of the box. When we put these together, we find that we can effectively trade in modern markets. We can take on the big boys. We can have a high degree of success and confidence in applying the Davis box method. Now, if you're trading a 12 month high, then what I suggest is you go back and see the compatibility with Davis box. If it's compatible from six months through to 12 months, then it's likely to be compatible going forward. This is an effective way of plundering the market. It's a way of setting a guaranteed stop loss that you do not have to monitor on an intraday basis. You can go to work, come back at the end of the day. Yes, it's closed below the bottom of the box, sell on the next day. It was an effective method in the 1950s and 60s when Davis was applying it. It has become a very effective method again, now that our market is making new 12 month highs, simply because there are so many stocks moving into that category that we can apply this technique. Now, as Karen mentioned, the number of resources there, our book has just become available. It's published, it is available um, in ebook format on Amazon and so on. It's in hardback and in paperback as well. We certainly encourage you to go and buy it because it talks about the currency trading techniques and approaches that we've talked about. Last week, I spoke about the strategic analysis of currency markets to identify where we might be trading. Parents and I talked about how those trades are executed using an hourly chart. And remember, that hourly chart is a live candle. In other words, as the price activity develops during that hour, the shape and size of the candle changes. So you don't have to go back to the three or four minute chart. You can if you want to, but you can use an hour chart to manage that on an intraday basis. Thank you very much for your time and attention for listening. We've left time, to, not as much time as I thought, we've left time for questions. Over to you. All right, brilliant. All right, thanks, Daryl, for that. Um, yeah, feel free to ask your questions. Now's the time. Okay, maybe we'll we'll, we'll cast it back to uh, to your screen. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened earlier. How much um, did you hear from my end, or did you not hear anything? Is this at the beginning? At the beginning of the presentation, you mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, you seem to have dropped out suddenly. But... Oh, okay. All right, I'll, okay. I'll quickly run through just one more time for everybody. Um, it'll just be a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, All right, good. here we are. Okay, excellent. Now, questions? Okay, here we are. All oh, sorry, right, so, I, meant, um, yeah. I meant we heard the slides, but then after that, oh. you disappeared for some reason. After Chelsea. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry, because I was talking for five minutes or so. I didn't know where. Yeah, you, yeah we heard that, but um, then yeah, you suddenly we'll disappeared. The, mm. Yeah, we'll go straight to the question. Let me take it over to... Um, I'll pass it back to... You can read the questions out. Yeah, okay. All right, they're just coming through now. Yeah. All right, here we are. Just give me a second. Okay. All right, the question for Cameron, why can't you set a take profit before you go to bed? Why do you have to be awake to close oh, your I trade? See. Because anything can happen when you're asleep. So even when I've been awake, I've seen trades where it's going really well, really nicely, the trend's going really, really well, but then suddenly the GMMA lines seem to compress and change direction. And you see that in front of you. So if you're asleep, you can't see that and you can't exit the trade at the point that you'd like to. So that's why I always close the trade because I can't set it automatically. I can't put like a trailing ATR stop loss automatically onto the trade. Okay. And also remember, and you got people like Boris Johnson. I mean, Boris Johnson <laughs> can roll over in the middle of the night and have a major impact on GVP. Unless you're there to watch that impact, you end up getting caught very quickly. Okay. And uh, where can where can they find the Davis software? Davis software, as I said, is not on MT4. It, we have it on Guppy Traders Essentials. It's available on Metastock. There's an application of it there. It's available with OmniTrader. It's available in a number of other software applications. However, I would say, although it's convenient to be able to just automatically have the boxes drawn, it's not a difficult process to understand. So if you start with a search to identify all those stocks today that made a new 12 month high, and you'll probably find there's 15 or 20 or maybe even 30 of those on a good day, and simply use your own charting software, use MT4, go through them and just very quickly see if they meet the Davis conditions. It's a fairly simple process to do. So software will make it quicker, but it's not a difficult process by hand either. Yeah, and is this mentioned more in the book? Is this in the book? In this particular book, in the new book, no, I'm sorry, it's not mentioned in this book. However, I can give you another great book which covers it in detail. We did look at it in detail in Trend Trading, uh, which was published some time ago. And Trend Trading, of course, was written when markets were trending strongly. Now, in the Australian market, we've been asleep for the last 12 months. We've simply moved sideways. We're only now beginning to develop trending activity. And we're getting a great deal of interest in the Davis technique coming out of Australia. We've had ongoing interest in Davis approaches coming out of the US, obviously, because of these strongly trending markets for the last 12, 14 months. Okay, and a um, question for you, Karen. What sort of risk reward ratio do you get on average? I always start off pretty much one to one. So that's my risk reward. Sometimes it'll be one to one and a half, two, possibly. So it just depends on the the ATR line, the trader's ATR line. That's my stop loss. So it depends on how how I get into that trade and then how much my 20 to 30 pips is above that. So if I can get into a trade at like a 15 pip risk and then I'm going for 30 pips, then the risk reward is much better. Okay. And is your entry trigger exclusively the behavior of the GMMA indicator or do you consider the nature of the latest candle as well? No, I don't look at candles. I, I pretty much use the GMMA. I do look at price action together with GMMA behavior. So if I see um, 
like maybe I might like what I described earlier where I saw that candle rejecting the trend line I'll look at something like that but I don't really look at candlestick patterns or anything like that so most of it's okay. based on the GMMA and pullbacks into the GMMA question for Daryl is Davia system good for index trading too it's not suitable for all indexes so you need to look at it and go back and see how compatible it's been as the index has made new six, eight, 10 and 12 month buyers. But it is particularly compatible with a number of sub indexes. Now remember the broad index, XJO, S&P, Dow, et cetera, an aggregation of all of the behaviors of the, the 500 or 30 or 200, whatever happens to make it that index. So the psychological impact in those indexes is diluted by their membership. But once you get down to specialist indexes and specialist ETFs, then the psychological behavior of that market segment is more intense and the DARVID application becomes more compatible and more useful in those environments. And a question for Karen. So what time frame are you using and um, how do you get those blue and red lines? The time frame I'm using for entry is usually the one hour chart. And if I need to look at a broader trend, it'll be the four hour or daily chart. And the blue lines and the red lines, you can draw them manually onto the chart. I'm not sure, Daryl, is there a MT4 indicator in the store for that? I'm not sure about that, but you can draw them manually if you have exponential moving averages in your software. Okay, if you're using MT4, MT5, what you do is you just open up any chart for a start and overlay the first group of moving averages, which are three, five, eight, 10, 12, and 15 period moving averages, and they must be exponential. Then select a different color and overlay the next group of moving averages, which are 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, <coughs> and 60. Why 60? 60 because the Americans think it's a magic number and they use that for all sorts of reference points. Then save that as a template in MT4. So that means that any time you open a chart, you can simply select, call it Guppy GMMA, that's what I do, select Guppy GMMA template and it will automatically apply across that chart. And I use that as a default chart for setups. Now, if you're using things like Metastock, uh, Easy Charts, uh, Guppy Traders Essentials, a whole range of other uh, charting softwares, then you'll find that GMMA is already included uh, as an indicator in those programs. Okay, and um, yeah, I think there's uh, just a few quick questions here. So first one, Karen, um, why do you, how comes you don't set a take profit? Um, why do you always have to be awake to close a trade? Sounds similar to the other question. <laughs> why do I say Oh, have to be I awake? said this already. <laughs> Oh, somebody asked something similar, I thought. Is that the same question where I say that I like possibly, to Possibly, possibly. Um, a couple of questions um, just in relation to the ATR. Um, I guess everybody will receive a recording tomorrow for last week's session and uh, this week's. Last week's was obviously more focused on the GMMA and the ATR. But uh, Daryl and Karen, if you could just maybe quickly explain how people can get the indicator again. Um, that Yeah, that'd be great. Um, all right, what I'll move on to another question and what I'll do is I'll post the link uh, into the chat box, but it'll take me a second or two to, to find it. Yeah, okay, no problem. So with the GMMA ATR, is it good for commodities and index? Yes, both the ATR, comment, sorry, Karen, both the, both the ATR uh, and GMMA are applicable across all commodities, all indices, all stocks, uh, because it's picking up the behavior of the market. Um, so it's not dependent upon the instrument that's being traded. Perfect. All right, well, um, yeah, I think that's all the questions for now. Have you um, have you posted the link, Daryl? I'm just about to post the link now. Yeah. Um, and also, is there a Kindle version of your book as um, someone's yes. only see a paperback version on Amazon? It will be available as an electronic version very shortly. Now, where do I put in the bits? Um, 
Does it give you the option for the chat box? Yeah. There's the there's the link for the um, ATR indicator if you're using Metastock, and if you're using MT4, then there's the link there. Uh, yep. And it's so only available in MT4. MT4, MT5 as well. Oh, okay. MT5 as well. Okay, that's great. All right, brilliant. So All it's right, well, an MT4 for, uh, indicator, which which works across MT5 as, as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Well, um, that's brilliant. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll wrap things up there. And um, yeah, once again, Daryl, Karen, thanks once again for um for tonight's session. Um, so that completes the two part series. Like I said, everyone who registered will receive a recording for both sessions tomorrow. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our support team. Give us a call or send us an email, um, and you know we can help you with the platform, load indicators, or answer any questions you may have. Um, so yeah, all right. Well, just yeah. One, just, thanks again. Just one final thing, which I meant to mention before. I'm working on CNBC tomorrow in Squawk Box, so if you want to send in some questions, it's ten o'clock, uh, ten o'clock Sydney time. Perfect. All right then. Thanks everybody. Thanks Daryl. Thanks Karen. Thanks everybody and enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah. Thank you everyone. All right. See ya. Bye. Good night.